All right, here's the lick of the day you guys should try out, so. That's if you were in B minor, kind of going to E7 kind of thing. Let's check out this groovy riff a little two, bit slower. Three, four, one, two. So that money note is the major third on that E major chord. So we come out of the pentatonic to that note. That thing. And now Jude's solo a little slower too. So this is why you really want to get hip to Dorian mode because you got lots of chord tones in there. And we could also play it one octave higher in the House of Blues area like this. Hey everybody, Gary here with Pal Music, and in a moment we're gonna go more in depth on Jude's awesome riffs. We're gonna talk about the technique, the theory a little more that I mentioned in the intro animation, and I'm also gonna demonstrate how you could take these riffs and make them your own and make them part of your own vocabulary, because ultimately that's the goal of transcribing and learning riffs, is that we could then add it to our own thing. But in case you wanna leave early because you got everything you needed out of the intro, I just wanted to let you know that I challenge you to take these riffs, create your own solo, maybe even do it over a loop with the B minor seven to E seven, or you could just jam with me as I play the chords for a whole minute at the end of this video. You can keep it super slow, you could do it full speed, however you wanna play it and post it in the Fretboard Adventures Facebook group and also on Instagram. And be sure to tag Jude Smith and Pal Music. Also, if you want the tab of this riff and solo as a PDF and a play along tab fret live combo video, along with tab for five different ways to play a B minor seven to E seven all over the fretboard, that's available as a reward for the generous folks that make these videos possible at patreon.com slash palmusic. If you'd like to become a Pal Music patron, there's a link in the description that will take you directly to the companion resources for this video. All right, let's get back into the lesson. So like I said in the intro, we're in Dorian mode. You could almost think like we're in A major and we have the two chord, B minor, and the five chord, E7, but we never actually go to the one. If we went to the one, it would be jazz, right? Two, five, one. But if we just stick with the two, five, then it's funk. So super funky progression, and the Dorian mode is synonymous with the A major scale, right? So we're just in that tonality. Now, what he does here, going from this one minor chord to this four dominant seven, or this two minor to this five dominant seven, if we're thinking about it in terms of the relative major, is he leaves the pentatonic scale and hits that major third, right? Now this thing of leaving the pentatonic and hitting a major third, it's huge in the blues and Dorian mode is perfect in the blues, because check this out, on the one chord, Dorian has the ninth, which is a really nice note to add to your dominant seven chord. Going from the one to the four, there's that major third to the four chord. And then Dorian also works great on the five chord because we have the fifth of the five chord. So on the five to the one. Now Dorian doesn't contain the third of the one, but a common thing to do is bend up or hammer on to that third. So you can do like. So 
I made a whole lesson on this topic of hitting the major thirds in a blues context. I'll link to that in the description. Here's a short snippet. All right, now I'm gonna go on the balcony for the four chord. Back through the front door. Now I'm gonna go look out the window for the five chord. On the balcony for the four. Front door for the one. Window for the five. And then I also made a lesson on a David Ryan Harris solo where he does the same thing. So definitely check out both of those videos if you want to go more in depth. And now let's get into the technique behind Jude's lick and solo. So it starts out. So as far as techniques, here we got this kind of staccato thing going on, right? So we just lift up pressure as opposed to, we want. So you're just lifting the pressure off the note, but not taking the finger off or else you'll have that. You just, finger stays down, but just no more pressure onto the fret. Coming in on B2. One, two. Then, it's probably the hardest thing of all. For me, it was. One pick. One, two, three, four. Four notes. Really, five. So it's a backslide, but that's just a, you know, we're not actually playing that note. Otherwise, it would be like the blue scale. So this is kind of a blue scale lick, because that's the blue note. The flat five. So it's a backslide, then forward and back, and then a pull off. So one, two, three, four, one. And then, so that. What I'm doing is pull off. We're just going down the pentatonic scale into this two by two in shape five. This is shape one. But this isn't as cool as this. So that's a great way to get the lower register instead of going, going down there. So, so you can do pull off, pick, pick, slide. That's what I'm doing. I'm not sure if that's exactly how he did it, but he might have gone, he might have just done pick, pick. That you could do as well, pick. Pick, pull, slide. So you can do two picks or three. So then and that also starts on B2. One, two, and three. I'm doing is pick, hammer, pick, pick, slide, pick, pick, hammer, pick, pick, slide, pick, 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 pick. And that we're sliding in into that major third of the four chord dominant seven four chord. And then a back slide here. And this you can do a pull up or another pick. 
You know, in general, don't think of legato technique as like a cop-out. It has a cool sound to, you know, use one pick and get all these notes strung together without the attack of the pick. It's a cool sound as opposed to... that sound so so it's pick pick pull pick 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 pull pick 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 just that little nugget and each one of these ideas you could workshop that motif da, 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 and then goes up the scale da, 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 da. then now he leads us into that bend and again here staccato short right short now on these bends, I like to use the palm of my hand or this thumb part to mute all the other strings except the one I'm bending. It just makes it cleaner as opposed to, see there's just some extraneous noise if I don't do that. And I also use my first finger to block uh, you know, the other strings when I come up. So my second and third bend the string and I use the fulcrum technique kind of traditional blues bending technique as opposed to just pushing with the fingers I'm really just twisting the arm and and providing opposing force with my thumb so the, the guitar neck is not moving a lot of people when they start bending they go like this so now you're fighting extra hard because the guitar is moving so you want to and it's up down and up again. And it's a whole step bend, so we're bending to that note. I guess I was going a little sharp. That's the best way to work on your bending accuracy. Play the note you're bending up to and then try to match it. Doing a pre-bend also will really test how good you have it. Flat, flat, sharp, good. And then I also added the, for that one riff. One. I like to do pick, hammer, pick, pick, slide, pick, pick. that strong pull off it's a little kind of down and out and this finger has to stay solid so it's not and then as far as the funky strumming if you want to make a loop like this you know it's keeping that 16th note groove 1e e and the 2e e and the 3e e and the 4e e and, and just selecting when to press down and when to just mute and slightly touch the strings. You know, 
know, sometimes you could hit the low, sometimes the high. In my loop, I was singling out. So I'm just kind of muting out the other strings. just angling my finger in a way. All right, for the last minute or so, I just want to demonstrate making these riffs your own. So I started like him, did something different, changed the rhythm in between, but then ended on that main riff. starting like him, stopping, adding space, doing the riff in the higher octave, adding my own riffs, now doing that little motif he did, but then doing it into my own thing, again back to his riff, lower octave. simple, just exploring those phrases, sticking with that one little riff, how much can I do with it, nailing that money major third, back to the motif riff. So now I'm just going to play the chords for a minute or so, and it's your time to jam. Be sure to share it, have fun, I'll see you guys next time. All right, everybody, before I go, I just want to extend an extra special thank you to some of my higher level patrons. Thank you to Jeff Four, Daniel Laranz, Scott Martinez, Noah Brand, Chris Freeman, Jim McCall, George Ryan, Trampus Thompson, Michael Varney, Morton Rafas, Richard Colbars, Arwin Guzen, Sean Ellis, Alan Lea, Joseph McCarthy, John Hartquist, Don Stringham, and Cam Chernichon. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. And thank you to all of the POW Music patrons that make this content possible. Happy playing, and I'll see you guys next time.